Hello, everyone. My name is Tino Tran. I'm a senior solutions architect for specializing in edge services for AWS. Today, we're going to walk through setting up a CloudFront distribution for an S3 origin. This is common practice for applications storing static content in an S3 bucket and looking to accelerate it using CloudFront's caching capabilities at the edge. To start, you'll need to log into your AWS console and select S3 from the service list. From there, you can create an S3 bucket if you don't already have one uh, and specify a DNS compliant bucket name, uh, the region where you want your bucket located. And then from there, you can create the bucket. I already have a bucket created, so we'll go ahead and use that one. And as you can see here, it is S3 Cloud Front demo bucket. I've already uploaded three JPEG files to this bucket. Uh, if you would like to upload additional buckets, you can either use the console or S3's APIs to add more files. It's worth noting that when you initially create an S3 bucket, it takes time to uh, propagate that DNS name change, uh, the, the name for that S3 bucket out to DNS, uh, which could take up to 15 minutes. So from here, we can go to our cloud front from the AWS console. Uh, I have it in my history, but you should be able to find it in the network and, in networking and content delivery section of the console, of the service list. We'll go ahead and create a web distribution. For the origin domain name, we'll specify the S3 uh, domain that was created. Uh, if you created the S3 bucket in the same account as the one you're creating this CloudFront distribution in, it should show up in a drop-down list for convenience. If it's not in the same account, you can also type in the, the domain name, um, but you'll also have to make sure that that bucket has the correct permissions for CloudFront to access it. From here, uh, you have the option to restrict bucket access. Uh, so what this does is when you select yes, it'll ask you to create an origin access identity or select an existing one. Um, We'll create a new one here. And then it'll give you the option to allow CloudFront to update that bucket policy for you so that CloudFront can read the objects from your bucket. Uh, over this section right here, you can specify an origin path if you put all your objects in a subfolder. Since everything's in the root, root bucket, uh, for my bucket, we'll, we'll leave that blank. For origins that care about uh, the header name, you can provide a custom origin header with a, a specified value that CloudFront will forward to the origin on each request. This is useful for custom origins that would like to know which requests came from CloudFront uh, versus perhaps another client. Under default cache behavior settings, I'll go ahead and set this to redirect all HTTP requests to HTTPS. Uh, but you could select it. You, you do have the option of selecting HTTP and HTTPS, uh, so you could support requests using either pure pro protocol, or you can specify to only support HTTPS, in which case um, HTTP traffic would get dropped. We'll, we'll stick it uh, to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. CloudFront allows you to specify which HTTP methods you want it to accept. By default, it's get and head. If you specify uh, either the other two options, you have the option of configuring CloudFront to cache the options method. By default, we only cache get and head. In this example, since we're only doing read-only operations, we'll, we'll leave it at get and head. In this section, you can specify which HTTP headers you want to forward to the origin. We recommend whitelisting just the headers that your origin will care about. Uh, in particular, you know, if your origin is looking at specified, specific HTTP headers to decide which object to return, uh, you should whitelist those. If you whitelist, if you forward all HTTP headers, CloudFront will actually bypass the caching layers and not attempt to cache the object at all. Um, so it's important to make sure that you know which HTTP headers your origin cares about. 
Since S3 does not look at the headers, we'll leave this setting to none. In this next session, you can specify uh, the TTL, the time to live, that you want your objects to stay in cache. By default, we'll rely upon the cache control headers returned from your origin. Alternatively, you can also customize the upper and lower bounds for which you want the objects in, to be stored in CloudFront's cache for. So if your cache control header returns a value that exceeds the minimum or the maximum exceeds or is beneath the minimum or maximum TTL that's configured here, CloudFront will either use the minimum or the maximum TTL. If it's within those bounds, then CloudFront will use the value returned from your origin. If your origin returns no cache control header, we'll actually use the default TTL. In this case, it's set to 86,400 seconds, uh, which is, I believe, 24 hours. In this next section, similar to request headers, you can whitelist which cookies and query strings you want CloudFront to forward to your origin. We recommend, again, we recommend whitelisting just the the cookies or query string values that your origin cares about. You can also forward all for these and CloudFront will still try to cache them, but it could greatly reduce your cache hit rate if if we were for if um, CloudFront forwards all of these values because CloudFront will actually use use the value to build the cache key uh, used to look up the request on subsequent requests. As a result, you might have a large number of objects objects cached multiple times um, because of the different variations of query string parameters and for cookie values uh, that your origin may not care about. If you're serving smooth video content, you can select yes here in CloudFront will parse the manifest file and um, prefetch the subsequent segments. Since we're not here, we'll, we'll leave this as no. This is our signed URLs or signed cookies feature for serving private content. If you want to restrict viewer access to only authenticated users, uh, CloudFront will only accept requests that have a valid signature on the URL or the cookie, depending on how you have it configured. When you do this, you'll need to specify uh, who your trusted signers are, um, if it's just this within this account or specific accounts. We'll leave it to know here. You can also configure CloudFront to automatically compress content that um, that has the accept encoding header of gzip. Uh, if for for specified content types, uh, CloudFront will go ahead and compress that for you at the edge. Since we're only returning JPEG files here, uh, we're not going to use this feature. But let's say you were to uh, want to compress your JavaScript files or in CSS files, you can use this feature to compress and accelerate um, delivery of those objects. This right here is our newly launched Lambda at the Edge feature, uh, where you can specify different event types where we would invoke a Lambda function to manipulate the request or the response to from the viewer or to the viewer. Uh, for response type event types, uh, we would manipulate the request. The, you can invoke a Lambda function to manipulate the response um, on the way to the viewer uh, before it goes to the viewer or uh, on the way back to the viewer as soon as we get it from the origin. Uh, for request type event types, um, you can configure it to invoke a Lambda function to manipulate the request as soon as CloudFront re receives it from the viewer or just before CloudFront sends the request to the origin. Under distribution settings, you have the ability to specify which parts of our network you want to use. By default, we'll uh, specify it to use all edge locations for the best performance. Essentially, what this means is it'll use all of our CloudFront points of presences, also known as, as edge locations across the world to serve content to your viewers. If you knew you only had viewers in specified regions, such as US, Canada, Europe, and Asia, or just US, Canada, and Europe, you can specify a lower price class, which would reduce your CloudFront costs and uh, restrict your viewers to just using edge locations within those regions. 
Uh, this does not mean that viewers outside of those regions could not access your content. It would just mean that they would get routed to the nearest uh, edge location in the, within the specified regions. If you're using our web application firewall product, uh, you can specify the access control list you'd like to apply to this CloudFront distribution here. In this section, if you are using a custom domain name to uh, serve your content, you can specify it here as a C name. So let's say uh, www.example.com was serving my content. I would put it down here and then I would create a DNS CNAME record uh, that would point to the CloudFront distribution domain that would get created when I create this distribution. So here's an example of a CloudFront domain, d1111abcdef.cloudfront.net. Uh, when, when you use the default CloudFront dish domain name, we'll, off, we'll use the default CloudFront certificate, SSL certificate. However, if you were to use a custom uh, domain, you can upload or request a SSL certificate from ACM, our certificate manager service, and uh, associate it to this CloudFront distribution. For this example, we'll use the default certificate. You can also specify your HTTP versions that you want to use. Uh, a default root object, let's say you had an index.html file. You can turn on logging for access logs and specify the S3 bucket that you want that those log files to be written to. You can specify a prefix for the name of those log files. And you can turn on cookie logging. By default, CloudFront enables IPv6. And you can specify a description for what this distribution is used for. From there, we can create the distribution. It'll take approximately 15 minutes for the distribution to deploy worldwide. Since I already have one created, I will not do that, and I will show you that distribution. So here's a similar distribution that's created. Once the, the distribution is created, you can click on it and get to this screen where you'll see a number of tabs and the configuration settings that we've specified previously. From there, you can add additional origins. You can add multiple cache behaviors. Uh, our cache behaviors are based on path. So if you had, by default, everything goes to the default cache behavior. But let's say you wanted to create a cache behavior that uh, would route, would handle the request or caching differently uh, for, you know, let's say an admin path. You can specify the path pattern and which origin you'd want to route the request to, and then all of the same configuration options uh, as in the initial default cache behavior wizard are available here. CloudFront also allows you to create uh, custom error pages or change uh, how long we cache error responses in cache for. And we'll do that by error code. So let's say if you wanted to retry for every 403, um, you can specify an, a minimum TTL of zero seconds. By default, we cache everything for 300 seconds. Uh, this is to alleviate some of the load on the origin. If, if you wanted to, you can actually create a custom error response and specify the path to that HTML file, let's say, that uh, you had for that error response. So in the example they show you here, it says uh, every 403 would actually get routed to an error pages slash 403.html path. And then you can also change the HTTP error code or response code uh, that's returned to the viewer. In the next section, or our next tab, you can enable geo restrictions, which will allow you to create a whitelist or blacklist of countries where you, you want to either allow or disallow our viewers to see your content, right? So if you create a whitelist, you can say only viewers in Gambia or any of these number of countries can view this distribution. Um, alternatively, if you did blacklist, you can, it'll assume, you know, every, everybody has access 
um, unless they're specified. For invalidations, uh, if you had contents that objects that were stored in cache that you wanted to be purged from cache or expired from cache, uh, you can create an, an invalidation and specify the path and object name um, to invalidate from. We support wildcard invalidations as well. And that will typically invalidate your object within five to six seconds. Like other AWS services, we also support tagging, so you can uh, add tags to your to the distribution. So now that that's uh, we've walked through that, I can show you that um, you can take the CloudFront domain and go to it on the browser, and now we can see the object that was in the S3 bucket. If you have a plugin that allows you to view HTTP response headers, mm -hmm. you can see that because I just went to the HTTP URL, it was redirected to the HTTPS URL. And then uh, the subsequent request was actually a hit from CloudFront because I have this object already stored in cache from a previous request. So that concludes our demo for creating a CloudFront distribution for your S3 origin. Hopefully that helps you get along your way with using CloudFront.